together. You used to make me feel so happy I could die. Something like that. Here we are. Whoa. This is pretty nuts right off the bat. Ibuki! This guy's name is Ibu. First two characters of Ibuki's name. That was fast, hi everyone. I forgot that hit on some characters. <laughs> I forgot she could get Jab Strong Fierce on. I thought the Fierce whiffed on a lot of people. I don't remember actually. On crouching opponents, that is. Let me get this volume a little different. Turn it up here. The thing about um, Ibuki's close stand jab is it starts that TC, but it actually whiffs on Oro if he's crouching. Hit or block. This is the uh, ranking battle, yeah. Game versus. Er. Yeah. This is the one from Shend. Alright, Punish. She got it on Jab Strong Fierce, I think that's a little stronger. Overhead, I forget what it is. I think it's worse on Stand Connect than Crouch Connect. I think it gets deep frames. Oh, yes, cool juggles here. That combo keeps going. She can do two more jabs and then another towards, towards one house. That combo actually is a lot longer than what we got to see. If you dizzy the opponent midair with the Buki right there, she can get like six hits of a juggle fairly easily. Parry into air throw. It's the highest damage thing you can do after an air parry. Got him? Got him. Who runs Super 2 Ibuki? I didn't even look at her Super Bar until now. Super 1 is just it, all the meter you get plus the 50 50 with a grab. None of Ibuki's supers are amazing, but like Super 1 is the best by far, I feel. If you're looking at just pure which super is the best, it's probably Super 3. But if you look at like, you know, like in terms of combo ability and like when you can do it after a parry and how much damage it does and how much meter it costs. But 3 doesn't give you a whole lot of meter. Super 2 is not bad. It's just not very... Uh, she can slip it in. She can do cancels into like command dash and then super from there. It's not impossible to land. It's just not com very combo friendly. Ibuki having a 720 is a bit strange. This is a good Ibuki. Yeah, the mix-up. Even without the anti-air parry mix-up, she can just, like, do an air EX Kunai. It's not very good. If you come from Street Fighter 4 or Street Fighter 5, you'd think air EX Kunai would be this amazing thing. But it doesn't, like, she can't combo out of it on the ground or anything. Got him. Unfortunately, the only combo from... The only combo into Super 2 that's not the Fireball Connect is... Well, I don't remember if she has more than just this. She has a uh, Jump Fierce. Jump Fierce causes a back turn. And back turns... In Street Fighter 3, back turns combo into Command Grabs. So you can do an Air Fierce. Or even an Air Jab Fierce, which is one of her Air TCs. And then you can land in Super immediately. That grab, a lot of... Um, if you have even a very tiny combo into it, though, you get a shit ton of scaling. So it's best to do it raw. Neat. That was a very strange thing to do. I guess it was low risk, but like meaty, jump back, forward parry, that's like, why would you do that? If you're expecting DP, why don't you just block? Why would you expect a DP anyway? He got it, it worked, he got the bait. But it was a weird thing for the Dudley to do, and it was an even weirder thing for the Ken to expect. Ah, oh, that could have been a... No, that, was, that wasn't a punish. It could have been a punish. The stand strong couldn't have been a punish. If he just did reversal super, it would have punished the universal overhead. But instead, he got a stand strong that was just, you know, in neutral. He just got it. It just happened to work. And then he confirmed stand strong after that. Stand strong always links to super, I think. Even like max range. Doesn't matter if the opponent's standing or crouching. It's one of uh, Ken's most plus three moves. Far strong, that is. There is, there is, there's, there's, it's important to be unpredictable in this game, within reason. 
That was that's getting into unpredictable and weird territory. That's like getting into maybe not good anymore. But that kind of thing is strong in this game. If you can prevent the opponent from ever getting a read on you, that's a really good thing. Jump back gives you like a download on what their wake up is. You can see if people are going for wake up parry. You can see if they're going for wake up throw tech or if they're just blocking. <laughs> it's your OS parrying to jet mash jab. I laugh every time I see that. I don't do it very often myself. Aura doesn't need to. Aura has anti air OS parry into stand strong, which is usually better. Because it's uh, a lot of damage. Neat. That was a very easy parry. That was an easy parry on several levels. But it was still cute. Any best show? Most people don't do that on purpose. Ooh, failed parry? Ah, ah! If you attack early enough, or it depends on what you do midair, an air heavy might be too slow. If you get an air parry, you can usually attack and punish the opponent's air normal. EXDP is a true wake up in this game for Ryu and Ken. Nice punish. Nice. Oh, bit questionable. The parry was nice, I guess. <laughs> what was all that? That was a mess. The grab was no. The, the grab was questionable. The parry is good. Twitch Prime sub. Thank you. Dudley struggles to punish sweeps before he has um, super. He punishes to get. He he struggles to get um, long range punishes. His best long range punish is either a raw super or a ducking cancel to a super. So a max range showed a sweep. I don't think he has a punish at all. I mean, he can punish it with, like, raw super 3 or raw super 2. But he can't punish it with, like, buttons. And even if he can punish it with, like, a low strong or something like that. Unfortunate timing. That would work unless Dudley was already jumping. And by work, I mean Dudley would be forced to parry it, which is a very good ch chance of him winning. The Ken, that is. That confirms. Every single time you do um, short sing blow, you just buffer super motion. And then during the hit, you can react and super. Nice. Nice. Doing the super on block is something you should never do. But it's not a big cancel window, so it's still very easy. Easy to mess up. This uh, Dudley's on the verge of uh, knockout. Oh, that was a good bait. He probably did jump into parry to bait either a DP, which he would then punish, or a block super, which he would then punish, or uh, if it was a wake-up throw, he could do like jump around a house or something and punish it. It's still, I don't like that kind of meaty jump in this game, but it's not, it's not useless. That's what he was going for, I think. And again, it lets you see what the opponent's game plan is on wake-up. That being said, people tend to not do the same thing on wake-up in this game. People are as unpredictable on the ground as they are in the meaty scenario. The defensive guy is just as unpredictable as the offensive guy. I mean, I know everyone just kind of handles mix-ups in different ways, but in this game it's exemplified. I know it's you're supposed to like handle a coin flip doing different things, but there's it's a pretty complex coin flip in this game. Ooh. Anti-air low. It was kind of late, but it still worked. Caught Dudley what appeared to be doing a jump in parry. That was a rewarding thing for Dudley to go for there. If he did jump in parry and he anti-aired, if he like got a st stamina house or a DP or something like that, crouch fierce, uh, his combo would have fucked Ryu up. Is Dendro near top 10? Probably. Very good chance. Why? <laughs> you shook out. Jump Forward jump there is not guaranteed. Dizzying the opponent on the ground with a dungeon. It depends on the level of dungeon, but usually the opponent can shake out if they're really fast. 
That's why a lot of reuse do forward dash there. But you lose a ton of damage, so most most reuse just, you know, still forward jump. You went for low forward. That's a little bit slower. Bit of a harder combo. Normally you see reuse you stand fierce or crutch fierce there. Yeah, so the thing is, like, um, your inputs are all being saved up during a dizzy. And whatever the most recent thing you did is what you get when you shake out. It's not like uh, in Street Fighter 4 and 5 when you shake out of a dizzy. Uh, in those games, you get, you're get you put in automatic block for a little while. And that way, you know, your random meshing doesn't result in a reversal fireball or some bullshit that you didn't want. You're allowed to shake out as fast as humanly possible. But in this game, you want to shake out as fast as possible, but then kill your mashing right before you would be hit. And, like, shift over to, like, a block or something like that and just pray that you shook out enough. Very difficult to shake out and not shake out in such a way that you're doing unsafe. If you can shake out in such a way that you get a DP, that's not too bad. Not so easy, though. Ryu's, Ryu can really run any super, but Denshin is probably the best one. Ryu probably cares the least of any character in the game about what super he picks. Elena is another contender. Ryu and Elena do not mind their super selection very much. That was neat. Ducking through a fireball. People, a lot of attacks in this game have like anti-fireball properties that people never use. Shinshoryu is not too hard to land. Remember that parries are super confirms in this game. The main problem with Shinshoryu is that you don't have any EX. Which is also the main problem with Denjin. And Ryu's EX Donkey Kick is kind of good. Denjin's Ryu's best super outright. But like, you know... There's the factor that if you can get a nice parry, you basically instantly win the round with Shinshoryu. And with Shinku, you get a lot of EX to play around with, and Ryu's EX is pretty good. Uh, four throw into Shinshoryu, Dudley can just quick stand to get out of. And there's literally no reason he shouldn't quick stand. But I know you're memeing. <laughs> it's it's true. It's actually true. Um, Shinshoryu does change the way the opponent plays. You have to you have to be a little afraid of Shinshoryu. Oh, this is part two of two. Time out. Fuck these guys. Where's part one of two? Here we go. We'll get back to them. Oh, who are these two? That was interesting. Um, it's double DP is nice. That's something Ryu doesn't have that Ken does, and that makes his um makes his damage really high. Um, Aerie X Tatsu is something that Ken doesn't or er, Ryu has. Ken Ken has that Ryu doesn't have, and it's one of the best air attacks in the game. Um, uh, Ken's overhead into super gives him a really strong meaty pressure. Damn. Ken has like a good overhead to super confirm and a good low to super confirm. And also, you know, if you're just trying to defend between those, he can always throw you. He's got probably the worst or second worst meaty mix up in the game to deal with. Dudley being the other contender. 
Although I wouldn't say it's fun to be on the ground with a Makoto or a Yun next to you either. Basically in every way that Ken and Ryu are different. Um, how are you just going to come in here and say that back, back forward isn't one of the best attacks in the game? You can't land a super that easily. He's got like unblockable setups with the Denjin. But uh, random normals go to super more easily with Ken. You've got empty cancels from low forward, you've got dead cancels from low forward. You've got low strong confirm, you've got far strong confirm. Good car throw for Ken, what? Ken's car throw is like the only shadow car throw that's not good. How are you going to come on bath me? I see that shit all the time in high level play. If back forward didn't work, then people wouldn't use it. え、何それみたいな感じでしたね。ああ。まあ、考えるとまあ、これは一応球でいいんですよね、一応。俺、石でもいいんですか。じゃあまあ、ルルムルさんが球の方がちょっと切り当てるかなっていう。まあね、ワ
I uh, fixed some bugs yesterday. Oh. This, I don't think this can kill. I think he was better off going for a reset at the end of that. That was a really bad punish. It's really bad that he even activated Super, to be honest. What he should have done was the light kick later to get the stones on Meteor and then command grab from there. But it was still not a great way to get the guaranteed kill. His best hope was probably meaty whiffed stand light kick into low forward. And then just take the chip. The chip was fine. The neutral in this matchup is less bad than you would think, but the health differential and the stun differential is just really too high. Or just out damages and out, like, he out damages Remy really hard. And then his dizzy output means Remy can get stunned very, very easily. Opened up twice near dizzy. Or also has a touch of dizzy in the corner. If you have super. It's not un it's not too impractical. It's a little bit harder to do than the one against Q or Chun Li or Elena. Ooh, this is gonna be a shit ton. He went for just the damage juggle. This is fine. Unusual Ender. That's actually really cool. Or it could have been really cool, but he dropped it. No super confirm. That would have been really nice. Remy's still in a relatively good position here, actually, though. I would actually I favor Remy for this one. Oof. One kind of cute thing that Remy can do is if he throws a Sonic Boom and the opponent's like jumping in, he can cancel the Sonic Boom into a Super. Super 2. Super 1 also works technically. A Super 2 is a little bit more likely to actually anti the opponent. That'll be it much worse if they parry it. It's interesting when you see a mirror and people pick different Supers. So that medium kick doesn't lead to anything, unless you've got a super. I don't even know if it cancels. I think it does, but I don't know. I can't think of a time I've ever seen a Remy cancel it. Ooh, very nice. Remy doesn't really have that much time to charge. Like, he has plenty of time to charge a neutral. That was probably a punish. Very cool. All cold blue kicks are minus. And, um, that is a two frame super. So it'll punish almost any minus attack in the game. Including that one. That's very interesting. So medium kick into super is a link, but um, I don't know if it cancels. I don't know if you can choose to cancel it like after a parry or something like that. This medium does cancel. How about that? <laughs> Doing close medium kick into flash kick is something you'd never do, because you just use low strong instead. And close medium kick into sonic boom is something I just don't see players do, so... Oh, you know, I think I've seen Remy players do close medium kick into cold blue kick. It's like some kind of weird, like, parry bait thing. So you say parried my close medium kick, time to cancel it to a fucking cold blue kick. I talk about this with... Oh, that just works, doesn't it? On Q. Remy can just do uh, crouch fierce into light cold blue kick into flash kick on Q. Mid-screen. Q's got a very... He takes a long time to hit the ground when he falls, and he's very wide. So, uh, interesting juggles work on him. Um, Remy literally cannot stop Q from taunting. Oh, he didn't go for the fancy there. Round one anyway, Remy cannot stop Q from taunting. That's probably gonna kill. Oh, nice little parry. It was not a hard parry. He was fortunately very far away, and it was kind of a late super. Or I mean, an early super. <laughs> That's a decent punish, I guess. He probably equalized the extra health that uh, Q got from the taunt. This is a really good position. Remy wins handily in neutral in this matchup. It's like very unfair, just how strong Remy is in neutral. 
But Q wins a lot in damage, <laughs> so it's not as bad as you would think. It might legitimately be like a 7-3 though. More likely a 6-4. At most levels. I can see if, if it's two very high level players, I can see it shifting out into Q's favor. It's one of those matchups. Nice. Anti-air uh, dash punch knocks over and sends them full screen, which gives you a lot of free approach or a taunt or two. Remy is a relic of... He's like a Street Fighter 2 character. It's like, hey, could we put a Street Fighter 2 character in Street Fighter 3 and make him fair? But there's too many mechanics in place that make Remy, Remy's tool set not good. This is a matchup where um, one character wins very handily in neutral, being Oro. But Oro also keeps up with Q in damage, so it just ends up being a really shit matchup. Oro just completely manhandles Q. Oh, he was he didn't back up before his EX uh, Sonic Boom. EX Fireball. Missed it. <laughs> sloppy, Vanau, sloppy. Very sloppy. Oh, nice red. Oro actually, that's kind of weird that he did the red parry and then went for the uh, stand hard kick, because Oro gets the stand hard kick no matter what. You can just block the whole slappy hands and still do stand hard kick. If you get the red parry, power to you. But you would mostly go for the red parry to get a stand strong punish. Because if you do um, if you do uh, red parry last hit, you can walk in stand strong and get basically a kill combo. Huh. This is like an 8-2. This is like a really shit matchup. Takahashi is a good Q, but like really Oro, if he plays well, should like not lose. That was a nice punish, I guess. Better than letting the taunt slide anyway. A little fast. Throwing it into the corner was probably better than a punish, to be honest. No, he had an uh, infinite there. He probably should have just done the infinite. Very questionable plays from now. Yeah, got him. <laughs> the overhead, he went for the double low overhead mix up. He wasn't expecting it to work. Oh, this that could have killed infinite! I would have won there. That was terrible. He went for close strong there and didn't get it. He still he could still win this fairly easily. This is definitely not over. Okay, now it's over. Oro has a good chance of making it to SF5 by Season 3. Or even Season 4, I guess. Oh, it ended. Alright, these two. <laughs> Oro's crouch low profile dash punches, by the way. Dash punch is normally a really good tool, but it's a really shitty tool against Doro. I don't know if Elena and Chun-Li can low profile. I think that they can. Uh, G being Q is likely. Oh, season 4. Season 3? Season 4. Season 4 or, or Season 5. There you go. Q is Chun Li's dad. I forget his name. That's a curious decision. That's why. That was not going to go through the mirror. <laughs> if the mirror is not on him, Q can super 2 through a mirror, I think. But super 1 through a mirror does not work. Very important to know what goes through is in this game. That's cute. Pretty good punish, too. Good read, good follow up. Oh, you don't see this very often. Yeah, you got the unblockable. And then a reset to another one. He's got a great screen position, but he needs that mirror to get the... Ooh. 
You got the first prey and didn't go for the second. I might have done that to be honest. Super good meter for Urian. I think he should burn one of them to just like try and get the round. There it is. It's kind of a questionable one to burn. EX is the one that's least likely to help you, although it's the safest. Oh, he burned two! And it worked! The thing about every meter you burn is you have a really good chance of getting most of the bar back. I shouldn't say most, but it's very easy to use a mirror to get more meter. Just by the pressure you get. That's a punish, I think. Mid-screen mirrors, all they do is just push the opponent to the corner. Corner mirrors are where it's really at. And of course he's got certain mix-ups. He's got certain knockdowns where he can get um, meaty mirror and then get you and the mirror on different sides. Yeah, armor is like not even a thing in this game. Alex EX elbow is like an entirely different attack than it is in Street Fighter. That one is too. EX headbutt. Nice. Good little setup. He got some fancy combos going. Oh, he's going for another. Oh my god, that was an unblockable. Very flashy. Yurian combos are really cool in this game. That was a mid screen combo, but he was super close to the corner. Bouncing people off the mirror is harder in this game than it is in Street Fighter V. It's very fancy to do. Mirrors have a lot of hits in this game, I think six. Whereas I think mirrors in Street Fighter V are only three. Mirrors do reflect fireballs in this game. Fun fact. Most of them. All but a few. They don't reflect Dungeon. They don't reflect Oro's EX Super 2, if you can call that a fireball. They do reflect uh, most other Super Fireballs, like Akuma 1 and Akuma Air 1 and Ryu 1. Sean 1, I think. This matchup is okay. It's like one of Yurian's worst, but it's okay. It's probably 6 4. Yurian's a pretty good character. He's not destroyed by Chun Li, but it is one of his worst matchups. Uh, meter is the big key for him. He'd like to get Chun-Li in the corner without using bar. So that he could use the bar when she's in the corner. But it's occasionally worth spending the bar just to move her a little bit. Yurian, they gave him a lot of the same stuff in spirit. The actual way of doing it is quite different. But like it feels the same. This good meter to spend. He's going to get Chun-Li in the corner for this. Oh, that was about as bad as it gets. He managed to save it somehow. That was like a terrible time to get back thrown. All lows. Didn't work, but he still got a decent amount of bar. Ugh. No, this is hard. It's doable, but it's hard. Chun-Li kills him off a touch. He's almost got the meter, but the meter is not likely to help him with this position. He can maybe get a little bit of damage. Mm, yeah, see, that was the maybe. And that was the little bit. He used his mirror to get a 50-50 on a throw. Even if we got that throw, chun was still alive. <laughs> Ooh, head out of an EX uh, Mantis. Yeah, a lot of really tiny ingenious decisions for Yurian. They did the same thing with uh, Guile, I feel. They did a good job of preserving Guile's identity without making him silly. Gal's fireball on Street Fighter V would have been bonkers. Gal's combos as well. Gal's charging. Still very intricate. Still very interesting. Interesting time for a red. Third Rekka works a little bit like... Um, uh, Fei Long's. Not as good though. Can't explain it. It just isn't. 
it's more risky and less rewarding for Fei Long somehow. I mean, for Yang somehow. Third Wrecker doesn't do very much damage, and Yang doesn't have very much health. And the chances of people hitting a button as a reversal, not as high. Ooh. I'll look, I'll look at this. Matchups, huh? By boss. Chun Li, Ken, Yun, Makoto, Oro. Oro's pretty high. Yang, Dudley, Goki, Yurian, Ryu, Erena, Nekuro, Ibuki, Arix. Is that 12? What did he do to get up there? Remy, Sean, Hugo, Q. That's curious, man. That is some curious matchups. I would maybe agree that Q and Hugo have some of the worst matchups in the game that are worse than Sean and Twelves. And yet I would say that Q and Hugo are very easily better than Sean and Twelve. This is a very curious thing. Twelve versus Chun Li. Alright, let me look at Oro's and make an analysis. Oro Chun Li three seven. Maybe? I I I I've always seen the classic eight two, but three seven is is believable. Oro Ken 4-6, I would agree with that. Oro Yan, 4-6, I would agree with that. Oro Makoto, 4-6. I, I think that's 5-5. Five, five. Oro Yang, 4-6, I would maybe agree. Uh, Oro Dudley, 5-5, five, five, I agree. Oro Akuma, 6-4. I think it's 5-5. Five, five. Oro Yurian is 5-5, five, five, I agree. Oro Ryu, 5-5, five, five, I agree. Oro Elena, 6-4. He, he thinks Oro beats Elena. <laughs> that's curious. Oro is, um, I think Oro loses to Elena. It's like probably 4-6, maybe 3-7. It's pretty bad. And he thinks it's pretty good. Even, um, even Kuroda's tier list, when he had like Oro as like a super, like third best in the game or whatever, um, he had 4-6 Oro versus Elena. He thought it was a bad matchup. Oro Necro 6.5, I agree. Oro Buki 6.5, I probably don't agree. I think it's probably 5.5 5. 5 at best. Um... Or Alex six four. I that might be seven three. To be honest, that's at least six point five. He's underrating. He's underrating Oro against Alex. Oro bodies Alex. Uh, Oro twelve seven three. I probably agree. Oro Remy seven three. Probably agree. Oro Sean seven three. Yeah. Oro Hugo seven three. Maybe not. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't, I don't know. It's more like six point five territory. Maybe seven. Oro Q eight two. Yeah, I agree with that. This is like pretty good. This is um. I agree with those matchups. Those are the ones that I have any sort of opinion on, any sort of professional opinion on. This is like a decent little aura list. And then ends up putting him pretty high on this tier list, huh? So uh, let's take a look at some of the obvious ones. Where's um, where's Makoto versus Q? <laughs> he put that as 8-2. That's probably, a lot of people call it the worst matchup in the game, and I don't see any 1.5s anywhere, so... Okay. Um, let me see. What's like a weird matchup? What's a what's a matchup that you wouldn't normally? Uh, I'm taking a look around here. His matchups for Alex aren't okay. What's a character who's in a grossly strange place? Let me look at Yuri. I want to see Yurian's tears. Yurian. Uh, he's got very extreme matchups for Yurian. Mostly extreme winning matchups. That's um. That's curious. Most people don't think that Yurian is too strong in the matchups where he wins, but he's got him as being pretty strong in the matchups where he loses, so overall this is this is pretty kind to Yurian. He thinks Yurian's pretty strong. And yet Yurian with his totality of matchups is still not very high up on this list. No, I'm busy. Maybe in just a little bit. Uh what's twelve? What what's up with twelve being so high? It's not even the 12's high, it's just the, the minus 18 is like what I'm used to seeing for 12. What's going on with the characters below him? What's going on with Hugo? Hugo Chun-Li 2.5. I usually see that as 2.8, so that's actually better than what I normally see. Hugo Ken 3.7. I don't... Is that that bad? EX Tatsu is really problematic for Hugo, but apart from that, I thought it was a fairly ordinary matchup. I mean, it's not good for Hugo, but 3.7... 4-6 for Yun. I think classically that's... No, that's probably right. 
four six for Makoto. I think classically that's five five. Three seven for Oro. He likes Oro a lot versus Hugo. I maybe agree. Um three point five against Yang. I think Hugo Yang is not too bad at all. That surprises me. He's got three seven for Dudley. That's also usually regarded to be an eight two. Two point five against Akuma. He's got Akuma worse than Dudley. That's interesting. Uh, Akuma is shit for Hugo, don't get me wrong. It's a very bad matchup. 3-7 for Yurian? Is that that bad? I don't think so. I don't... I don't... I thought that was like 5-5 five, five or at worst 4-6 Yurian's favor. I don't see that. 3-7 for Ryu. Hugo Ryu. 3-7. What? Why does he hate Hugo so much? That's not that bad of a matchup. That's like a fairly ordinary matchup. Ryu doesn't even have anything in particular that like beats Hugo. It's just like, you know, who gets the parries and who gets the punishes and whatnot. Hugo actually has a good answer for Denjin, too, in the Super 3. That's a that's a weird one. Um, <laughs> Hugo Elena, 2-8. Huh? I mean, that's a bad matchup. Don't get me wrong. But he's got that as Hugo's worst matchup. I usually see that as a 3-7. 2-8? Healing, I guess? You really think healing's that good? 2-8. Elena versus Hugo. Shit. 3-7 um, three, three, versus Necro. That might be right. I don't know. I kind of like Necro less than that. 4-6 um, versus Alex. 4-6 versus Ibuki. 4-6 versus 12. I can maybe agree with those. 4-6 versus Remy, I guess. 5-5 five, five versus Sean. 4-6 versus Q. He doesn't have... He doesn't have Hugo having a single advantageous matchup. And he only has one fair matchup. He really thinks Hugo's that shit. Wow. That's something else. He says Sean Remy is 5-5. Five five. That's curious. Q's matchups. Let me see if anything jumps out at me. He thinks Chun Li, Yun, Makoto, Oro, Yurian. That's a bit strange. He thinks all of those are two eights. He thinks Dudley's a three seven. Goki, uh, Ken, uh, Ryu, Elena, Necro, are all three sevens. I don't know, man. Like Q's not great, but you might be underrating him just a little bit. I like mostly... I don't mind the order of this list. The order looks kind of good. He put Ken above Yun. That's interesting. They're like super close by the wins. This kind of matchup edition tier list is a very strange thing because it's like, you know, if Ken beats Necro... Well, maybe not Necro. Well, if Ken beats Sean better than Yun beats Sean, which might be true... Um, that doesn't really affect anything in high-level play, you know, because there are no Shans. So this kind of, th this kind of, this style of tier list is not necessarily the best characters. If you have a character who's good but gets fucked by a common character, such as Ken, such as Chun-Li, uh, that character is far less, it's a far lower tier than he probably should be. You've got to, like, adjust the tiers based on character popularity. Um, so this isn't necessarily his order of the characters from strongest to weakest. That's an important thing to consider while looking at this. This is just totality of matchups. If everyone had to fight everyone in a big old round robin. Still, very neat. Alright, let's find some of the weird matchups. Just to look at it just a little bit longer. Matchups where a character beats someone who's lower tier than them. He thinks Aura is better than Yang, but that uh, Yang still beats Aura. He thinks Dudley is better than Yang. Or worse, he thinks Yang is better than Dudley, but the Dudley beats Yang. He thinks Akuma is better than Dudley, but that, uh, um, or he thinks Dudley's better than Akuma, but he thinks Akuma beats Dudley. Uh, let me see. Thinks Q is worse than Hugo, but that Q beats Hugo. I'm not seeing that many examples of a low tier character beating a high tier character anywhere in here. I'm not even seeing that many five fives. Necro's worst matchup is, I guess it's the three sevens. 
Chun Li and Yun. I would probably agree with both of those. And they probably are three sevens. Remy versus Yurian. Let me find it. Remy. Remy versus Yurian. He has that as a three point five in your seven six point five in Yurian's favor. I completely I like almost completely disagree with that. It's probably like a four point five, five point five to be honest. Alright, that was neat. That was a neat little excursion. I mean, Hugo is... It might be bad for Hugo. It turns around a lot at high-level play. Hugo, if both players can parry, like, if both parries can make... If both players can make hard reads and get parries, if they're both getting, like, the same number of parries, which they won't necessarily be... I mean, obviously, Hugo's going to be parrying a lot of Sonic Booms, and none of them are going to be leading to anything. But if both players get a, the same number of normal parries against each other, um, Hugo's going to, like, have double the damage output. Or like triple. <laughs> Hugo's damage output is so insane when both players are getting parries. And of course, you know, Remy's going to be far away from Hugo most of the time, but Hugo's not going to be taking that much damage when he's far away from Remy. Like Sonic Booms, they control the screen a lot, but they don't do that much damage. She could have parried that low that he made her land on. She could have blocked it, but she was going for a parry, like a air parry, because um, the position. I don't know if I'd call that the human element, but I agree. There are certain characters that get dramatically stronger, and certain characters who get dramatically weaker at a high level. Or is a character who gets stronger. Hugo and um, Q are characters that get stronger. Sean and Remy and um, 12 are characters that get weaker. Hugo has no tools for projectiles. He has parry and walk. Clap technically is an answer to fireballs, but it doesn't really help you against Remy. Clap is more incidentally destroys fireballs than it is do on reaction to a fireball. The fact that it destroys fireballs is not useless, but it's not very helpful. Hugo's answer to fireballs is up forward and mash parry. Up forward and be right. You've got to make some pretty hard reads when it comes to Remy's anti airs because he's got a lot of different stuff he can do. Thankfully, none of it's very strong. There is a unique animation in this game when you get swept out of a forward dash. We just saw it. The character tumbles forward instead of backward. Very cool. Tominaga is the best player in the world. I know because he won the last Capcom Cup by himself. Ooh, empty cancel right at round start. That's probably pretty strong. I feel like one of the big differences between this and other Street Fighter games is that players aren't pressured to act. If you do something minus, there's no guarantee the opponent's right about to do something. There's no guarantee the opponent's about to anti-air or whatever. You don't know what the hell the opponent's going to do. It's because if you know what the hell the opponent's going to do, you can just parry it. That looks good. So the opponent has to be aware of that. You never, you have to not get into the habit of like, you know, putting a position where you would hit a button to hit that button. You need to not have go-tos in this game. The dive kick could have gone in a bunch of different directions. So, you know, it could have been a short dive kick into grab. That super just happened to be good against pretty much all dive kicks, and also not too bad against an empty jump. He would have forced a parry. That being said, the parry is not super hard. It's hard enough that he could have potentially missed it. Wow! 
failed to get anything off during a Gene. Who is the best player? I just said it's Tommy, dude. The actual best player of this game? A lot of people like to say MOV, a lot of people like to say Kuroda. I don't know if I would necessarily agree with those, but they're both extremely good answers. I would probably agree with them. In terms of like raw most skill, it may well be Kuroda. In terms of success rate, it's almost definitely MOV. Or like boss or someone. Momoji actually. <laughs> Makoto Super 2 has been slowly getting more popular over the years, but it was always pretty popular. Back in the day, it used to be about as often as Super 1. Now it seems like almost all Makoto's pick Super 2. Nuki is a strong contender for one of the best ever players of this game. But I don't know if he's like, I don't know. He's mad good. I don't know if he's kept up. I've seen him moderately recently and he still looked very strong. Tommy's like always picked Super 2 only. Because he can actually hit the hard combo reliably. And he also uses it in neutral for better or for worse. Ooh. What a bad punish. Makoto staying forward does not cancel in this game. It does in Street Fighter 4. Interesting wake up. I'm not sure how much Deshikens kept up either. He seems to. You never see those players anymore. Deshiken was mad good in his heyday. And I very rarely see a Ken doing what he used to do. But in terms of neutral, rather than combos, I don't know if his if his Ken is still modern, if you know what I mean. It's very easy to fall out of this game if you don't play it for a while. Because the general gameplay style has been changing a lot. I saw footage of Hayao and that wasn't too old. Hayao was very, very successful right when this game was still like pretty new. And then he basically disappeared. But when I saw him, he still looked mad good. He still looked like one of the best Yugos I'd ever seen. I was like, damn. He was good at Hugo's bed matchups. There are a lot of good Hugo players who still fold to the characters who body Hugo. Nothing from here on out. What's this? Is this the Kuroda 